we're going to talk all about data visual visualization, in particular using a package called ggplot2. So we'll start off in this video with some ggplot basics. And what's nice is that the ggplot package or ggplot2 package is actually included in the tidyverse. So whenever you load the tidyverse package, uh, you'll see that ggplot2 is, uh, it is one of the, the packages that's included in, uh, in tidyverse. So uh, we don't have to load any additional packages beyond what we've, what we've already done. All right, now what is ggplot all about? Well, let's start with just some, some basic introduction here. Okay, let's, let's start by viewing the MPG data set that we've been working with. And so, of course, this is our familiar data set of manufacturers and models and then different metrics and, and uh, groupings of uh, vehicles. And so we have 234 observations here. And let's just say that we wanted to uh, make a plot of fuel efficiency against engine size. So let's say highway fuel efficiency against engine size. Engine size is represented by the column called DISPL, DISPL or, or displacement, it's short for. So engine size, so um, highway fuel efficiency plotted against engine size. And in base R, in base R, that would look like something like we could plot uh, MPG displacement and MPG highway, uh, and then it, it's that simple of a call, right? And so all we're doing here again is plot highway uh, against, against engine size. Highway against engine size. So this plot is good enough. Um, you know, it, it gives us what, what we want. Um, it tells us that MPG that the displacement variable from MPG is on the x-axis. It gives us the title of MPG highway on the y-axis. It gives us some blank uh, or empty uh, scattered points. And so we have a, a scatter plot that if we just wanted a quick plot, um, this would be perfectly serviceable if we, if we wanted to look at, at uh, how these two variables relate to each other. Um, but, you know, obviously, aesthetically, just kind of out of the box, it leaves a little bit to be desired. So, for example, if I pull this back up real quick, the the axis text is exactly what we typed into the plot argument. Um, so we get, instead of just, you know, DISPL being here, just the variable name, we get MPG dollar sign DISPL. And same for the y-axis, MPG dollar sign highway. So um, the axis text isn't very clean. Um, the plot itself in general is relatively bland. It's, it's plain, thin black lines and text on a plain white background. So it's just not very aesthetically pleasing. And then the points themselves, again, are just open circles. Um, it, it's just kind of, kind of an uninteresting looking plot, no color at all, uh, and just really doesn't have any life to it. Um, the other thing is that um, it, it's a little bit difficult in base R plot functions to... Uh, change some of the settings. So to change the way this plot looks is a little bit cumbersome, right? And so these are considerations that, that we want to take. So let's just make a note that, um, you know, it's an interesting enough plot, uh, but leaves a bit to be desired. Leaves a bit to be desired, right? Uh, it's bland bland looking and cumbersome to add or change the plot features. Okay. Uh, so again, if we want to change text or color or background or size or things like that, it's a little bit a little bit cumbersome to do that. So let's look then at what ggplot would have to offer. Okay, so let's just look at the, the ggplot syntax for the same plot. Okay, so it's going to be uh, MPG Dispel against MPG Highway, and we'll look at what this, this looks like. So we'll start by calling the ggplot function, and the first thing we need to do in ggplot is give it a data set. And then I'm going to write a plus sign, and we're going to call something called the geom point function. And we'll explain where all this is coming from as, as we go along, but for now let's just create the plot, and, and then like I said, we'll unpack the syntax as, as we go along. So our x variable is going to be 
uh, displacement, and our y variable will be highway. And so with just that call, now we get a ggplot. Okay? And so before we even expand this, you can see that we already get uh, a more aesthetically pleasing plot, right? So first thing to note is that ggplot provides provides a more aesthetically pleasing plot right out of the box. Okay. And so whenever we pull that up, just, just look at some of the features. It, it really fixes all of the things that, that I mentioned a moment ago. The, the axis text gives us just the variable name, right? Just DISPL and just highway. Um, the, the plot itself is more visually appealing. We have, instead of a plain white background with thin black lines boxing out the plot, we get sort of this nice differentiated gray background, sort of a soft gray background. Uh, it has some uh, white lattice work inside, so it's a little bit easier to keep track of where, you're, where you are on the plot. Um, you know, if, if I look at this point here, I can tell it's, it, it's at exactly six because it's right on the line, and I can tell, um, you know, comparing to these points, I can tell if I'm a little bit to the right or, or left of them a little bit more easily than I could uh, with just the plain white background. And then the points themselves are, are the solid black dots, a little bit smaller than we saw in the base R plot, but solid black black dots, which, which just uh, provide a little contrast against the soft gray background. Again, it makes the, the points just pop out on your screen a little bit more. So already, again, we get something that, that's quite a bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and, and so, you know, we can just kind of make a, a, a note to ourselves that out of the box, uh, ggplot, ggplot provides that. So the question really is, what, what's happening in the code, right? What's happening in the code? Well, ggplot stands for, uh, the gg stands for the grammar of graphics. And so a grammar of any topic is just its underlying structure and conventions and, and rules. And so the, the grammar, the underlying structure that, that ggplot uses is a layered approach to creating graphics. And so whenever we look at the, the code here, it's, you'll notice it's two lines of code. The first line is a single function call for ggplot. All right, and then the second line is a single function call for g on point. And to each of these functions, we provide a little bit of detail that we'll unpack as we go. And then these are connected by a single plus sign. So we're, what we're really saying in GG syntax is start with the ggplot function. That'll create one layer. Then add a second layer that will have the g on point function the results of the geom point function. So when you think about a ggplot call and you're building a ggplot or building any plot in the in the ggplot framework, really you want to think of it as starting with a base layer and then additionally adding layers as you go. So this one will be, you know, ggplot plus geom point. We could do things like plus, you know, another function, right? Another function with details. Okay, now obviously that won't do anything, but we could have we could have that and then, you know, you could have yet another another function with more details. Okay? And and you get the idea. We can keep stacking these layers on and on and on by adding a plus sign and then calling another ggplot function that would do something else or another ggplot function that would do something else. And so there are all kinds of functions available that each control a layer of your graphics. And so we start with ggplot. We can add some geom function that we'll talk more about. We could add a function that controls the color or the size or the shape. We could add a, a, another function that adds, uh, you know, maybe we wanted a curve over these, these, this scatter plot. So we could add a function that would put in a curve, or we could add a function that changes the text or puts a new title on, or anything along those lines. Any aspect of, of the plot that you can think of, there are functions or arguments to functions that we'll call. And so you just want to think of it as a, as a layered approach. So let me just delete all that fake code uh, that I put in there. And we'll, we'll recap um, what's going on in a ggplot call. 
Okay, what's going on in a ggplot call? Well, the first thing is that ggplot, the, the ggplot call sets up the coordinate system. Okay, the ggplot call sets up the coordinate system. So let's say we just call ggplot with data equals mpg and see what that looks like. So you see that we get nothing except that the screen is gray, right? So what's happened is we've gone from a blank screen. Now we have basically a blank canvas that ggplot has set up for us, and we know we're coming from the MPG data set. So we've really just set up a base layer. Um, essentially, ggplot is telling R uh, to create a blank canvas so that we can create a plot on top of it. Okay, so that really gives. I'll go ahead and put the plus sign there. Um, just creates a blank slate or a blank canvas, maybe is a better word. All right. Now, the next thing that happens is that geom point, the geom point call, adds a layer of points to the plot. Okay. So whenever we run geom point and we say mapping equals AES, X equals dispel, y equals highway, right? Then we're, we're going from our blank canvas and we're adding in all the detail that relates these two variables together. So we get the locations and, and the points, okay? And so what you wanna remember is that there are, there are um, many of these geom, let's just call them geom xxxx functions, um, and each one requires a mapping. Each one requires a mapping. And those mappings um, map to a visual element in the plot. Okay. Those mappings map to a visual element in the, in the plot or a visual property. So what we did is we mapped, uh, we mapped the x-axis property, the x-axis property, to the variable DISPL, and the y-axis property to highway. So you'll see that in our geom point function, we have mapping equals. And so we have to provide in any of these geom point functions or geom xxx functions, it could be point or, or smooth or Histogram will be one. We'll go through through several of these in this in this section. Uh, all these geom functions require a mapping uh, because they're trying to decide what kind of shape goes in the plot. So we give it a, a a mapping, and we we call this AES function that we'll talk about later. But we say that the mapping is the x-axis gets mapped to dispel, the y-axis gets mapped to highway. And you, and you say, well, why are we making a big deal about this mapping? It's just saying x equals and y equals. Well, that's a good point, but as we get into more detail, it's important to think of these ggplot functions as requiring a mapping because um, as mapping particular features, in this case x and y axes, two variables in the data set because it's that structure that gets used throughout ggplot. Anytime we want to change features about our graph, um, usually the way we're doing that is mapping that feature back to a variable in our data set. So for example, if we wanted to change the color of these points that we'll do, and we'll do that later on, we do that by mapping a color uh, property to a variable in the data set. So for example, if we wanted to, you know, if we had horsepower and we wanted to say, well, if, if the horsepower is different, change the color, then we could map a, a color a color property to, to horsepower, that, that kind of thing. So we really want to think when we're in the ggplot framework about what we are telling ggplot, uh, how we're mapping the features of the plot back to the variables in, in the, the data set. So we'll, we'll unpack that quite a bit more, but just again, think about what we're doing is mapping properties back to variables in the data set. So in general, um, here's a, a, a base Let's just call it a base ggplot template um, that really is the minimum, it's the minimum required uh, to create a plot. 
It's the minimum required to create a, a ggplot. So you're gonna call the ggplot function. You're gonna tell it data equals data set. And then you're gonna add um, some geome xxxx function that will get a mapping that is going to be filled with mapping details that will change based on whatever the, the geome function is. So if, if you provide just these two simple lines of code, ggplot telling it what the data set is, plus a geome function with some appropriate mapping for that geome function, you will get a, a kind of a base ggplot. And then like we said, from there, we can map in and, and, and explicitly state uh, additional features of, of the plot. Uh, so that'll do it for this video.